Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Lily. We're going to be drawing the second zebra in this picture below. The link for drawing the first one is in my description. And I hope this video helps you get out of any drawing slump you may be in. So here we go on the second zebra. You can see where I have the first zebra covered up just so I don't smudge it. But if you want to follow along with that, uh, just go to the link in the description and you can see how we drew that one. But right now I just grabbed my 2B and I'm just going to start by kind of giving an outline for this next zebra, which is on the left. And you can either just use that the reference I've included in the video or download it through the link I have in the description too. Um, this one, will, it'll like be labeled like zebra number two. But here, so I just put in kind of like a nice oval shape for the head and starting to fine tune the ears. Um, what I like doing, especially for these quirky stretches, sketches, you just really want to focus on the big shapes and then like once you get the proportions for them done you can go in and measure out where the finer details like ears, eyes, and like nose relative placements are without having too much too much work put into them or like too, um, too sharp of pencil lines things like that so it's nice to start with a big picture the broader shapes like just like an oval just a couple placements for kind of feeling out where the different parts of the faces are and then filling it in from there. So to me the things that stand out are just the, the face, the big oval, and then I put a couple places for like the, the eyebrows of the eye and then the ears and then that really nice mane that he's got going on there. Um, so I, I put the center point in and then we can just follow it down the neck. And then that also fills in where his neck is, which <laughs> works pretty good. And I'll zoom in here a little bit so maybe some of these lines will show up better. Um, so just always kind of like measuring with your eye between like where, where the relative distances are. Trying to make sure these are going to be in the right spot before we put the actual details of the eye in. So what I like doing is just like measuring, okay, like, um, Get like a distance for the width of the head and then use that to figure out the relative distances between other parts of the zebra is one way to do it or if you want you can actually use like a measuring tool but I've just typically always found that just using my fingers is easier so uh, so far uh, while I was just kind of talking there I measured out or put just the eye shape in based off of those original guidelines and Kind of like a little bit of a, a contour line for where the skinnier part of the muzzle is because we don't want it to look like his cheekbones or you know how fat his uh, like uh, the top of his nose is. Um, my cat's talking again because she's he hearing me um, vocalize, so she figures she needs to vocalize. So if it's picking up on here, sorry. Um, so then, based off of where that skinny part of the muzzle is, also I'm just gonna fill in. I'm also not sure if it's, if it's called a muzzle on zebras, but you, you know what I mean. Um, and then, and so I also kind of flared out where the nostrils will be. They kind of look maybe a little bit wide right now, um, but we'll fix some other stuff and figure out how that's going relatively. That's why we're just drawing really light right now, kind of trying to figure out where things go based off of where we put other things. Hi, kitten! And then we can change as we go. Um, and that's why it's just so important to keep looking back and forth. Uh, it's pretty easy just to fall into it where you're just looking at your artwork and like you have like an image in your mind of what you think your reference looks like, but it's always good to be actually looking at your reference rather than you're know, using the image you think you have in your head. So just kind of fleshing out the rest of the face then as we're going here. He's looking a little boxy, but I always find that it's easier maybe to sometimes use a little bit more sharp angles when I first put in lines and then like smooth them out later. Like it's just like the sharp angles help me keep my place somehow um, in the picture. So and I always just kind of lighten up some lines as I go so I, my eraser is always close um, just to give us some flexibility on where we're going here. <laughs> I have those brow um, Marker line, they still make him look so angry. Um, looks very like a very stern zebra, but we'll get we'll get to that. So 
So this is, you know, like me. It's just like a work in progress. Where I had the cheekbones originally didn't really quite work out, and then now based off of moving that out, the eye really is right at the edge of that bone structure. So I also have to move that out a little bit just to make it fit with where the eyebrow ridge was coming down from the base of the ear. Now his eye looks wonky, but it's just a placeholder for now. So, <laughs> um, oh man, that's just, he's really looking at us with that eye, isn't he? Um, but let me say, just a placeholder for now. So you're gonna kind of also look, you can see, like there's a lot happening on like that right side of his face or his left side, but the right side looking for us. So just kind of putting in some little guidelines for where the top of the nose is, the bottom of the jaw, and then like the cheekbone actually kind of curves around. I just had to, to go back and fix this eye because it's, sometimes when something is bothering you, it makes it hard to look at the rest of the drawing accurately. And then now that I have that set in place, you can tell that eye is now lower than the other side of the face to, um, but before I fix that, I want to kind of balance out the bottom of the face here. You can see accuracy where, like, I think it's his lip, it must be. Um, a little highlight on the very edge of that. So I want to put that in there for when we get to shading. And something with the shape of this top of the nose. I think it's just got a little too skinny. I'm going to go to mark in. For myself, we're gonna go back and shade the kind of like where the color changes are here with the top of the muzzle. And sorry, my well, camera stopped there, but we're back. And I'm gonna switch to an HB now, actually. And just kind of get ready to put in a little bit of the base shading, which if you watched the first video of the zebra, um, we put in that undertone like just like really light shadowing so that's what we're doing here again so if you watched it great we're doing like the same thing but if you didn't see the first video which is linked in the description what we're doing is you want to just put in a, a really like soft layer like soft as in like not a hard pencil so like your HB or lower about and eventually we're going to blend this out with a q-tip but this is just to put some values down so that way there'll be like indications of depth, shadows, um, like uh, texture, I guess, uh, underneath where the stripes will be so that we don't have to like try add that in afterwards and you know mess around with that. So we want to put it down first and then put our details on top of it once we have the values right. And sometimes an easy way to try to figure out how dark stuff should be too, I mentioned this in the other video, is if you kind of squint at it, that way you're not looking at the details, you're just seeing how dark, how light something is. And then like how the silhouette of your painting or drawing, sorry, um, matches the reference. So I was just lightening up some lines also there, um, just because like once you put down the undertone, it's going to be you can't really erase stuff because otherwise you pull up the undertone. And then I'm going back and fixing the eye that I had noticed earlier, where when I had fixed the far side of the face there, um, I found where the eye actually kind of should go better and I had left behind the other eye so <laughs> now I'm going to balance that out a little bit and then once you feel like you have the structure good then we can put the under value on the head so I was just using my HP but now I'm going to go to 2H and I like using the softer darker pencils because you're less likely for the lines to show but if you, I just switched to the 2H here. And if you're gonna do that, be, just be very light on the pencil. The farther back you hit hold on the pencil, the harder it will be for you to push too hard. So I'm gonna grab my Q-tip now and watch out for these really dark areas because if you've already used the Q-tip and you use a dark spot, it's gonna make your shading darker than you want it to. So I'm using a clean side because um, I don't want it to get too dark on the shadows. So I just switched to the clean side and I'm just so that it's not adding pigment, it's just blending what I have and maybe it's pulling up just a little bit to lighten it, oh, but that's okay. And I'll, you don't really have to worry too much about the, the muzzle there because it's going to be so much darker that we can just put down 
um, its own layer. So I'm going to switch to the 2B here, which is a softer, darker lead again. And since this is such a dark area, I can put in it with this pencil. The main dark spots kind of inside of the ears, that front of the mane, the stripes, the eyes, and then the nose. So I'm going to start by putting in some shadows on the in inner part of this ear. Once again, just, just looking at where the dark parts are on um, that reference photo. And I'm not pushing hard really at all. It's, um, it's just more just the, the lead type of a pencil because I'm you know, still trying to figure out the shape, so just in case I want to go back and change anything, you don't really want to ever be imprinting your paper because then it's going to be a lot harder to pull back up and it's harder to work with once it's like saturated. And then it's kind of blurry, honestly, like right where, where like the face ends of the neck starts in this upper left side um, of the face here. So for our artistic you know license or whatever it's called um you can i'm just gonna maybe add like a little darker line there just so it'll make more sense when you're looking at it even though there's not really an outline there but there can be like a sha shadow so it does you can kind of see the beginnings of it where the neck is darker even in the white areas than the faces so i'm just going to put in a little bit of a line that we can eventually blend out and then it'll just be easier to make sense of what's going on back there as we move out. Um, so it can be the shadow and there's also actually like a little stripe there too which so you can make it pretty dark. It doesn't have to just be a shadow. But then keeping that in mind when you go back to work on the face you kind of want to try to leave a white patch there rather than putting another black stripe right on the edge otherwise it'll really all blur together. <laughs> So just like in the first zebra again then, um, I'm just going to follow the stripe pattern that I see on the picture, but you don't necessarily have to. I'm not pushing hard here either again, just because I'm going to put in a couple highlights on the stripe, especially towards the top of the neck there where you can see there's that band of highlight. And then once again, just in case I, once I put some stripes in, I kind of want to move some. I want to start with light pressure and then I can go back over it once I'm happy with it and the stripes are mostly straight for kind of starting with the top down like two thirds and then you can actually see where they're curving around the neck so that's going to really help to give the zebra some depth too by having those curves showing that it's not just like a flat neck no it's you know, like curving around his throat And now he kind of looks goofy with a decked out neck and then just a white head. <laughs> but, um, I, the reason I kind of moved over here, even though I had started on the face, is just because since I am right handed, I will smudge stuff if I work right to left. So um, I'm trying to work left to right a little bit just so I run into less problems. So putting on this piece of paper like I did for the zebra that we had finished in the last video helps but it's still like the, the paper still moves a little bit and when you can avoid it it's good to do so here you can actually see his like like left front leg um, behind where the neck connects here so I really like that so I'm going to try accentuate it to by leaving out that black stripe that connects to the neck and just trying to show that there's a different stripe pattern going on because um otherwise it's kind of hard is if, if you never connect where like the rest of the body is it almost looks you know, like the neck keeps going for a long time since you don't see even like a hint of a leg so i like i was giving the hint that like hey this part of the body stopped and then i think it the proportions just look better because it gives you some sort of center but these stripes too pay attention to like the angle to where the stripe on the the mane connects to the neck because that helps it, it's a different it's not just like a straight line um, it helps to show difference in like what part of the body is what like we talked about before and then I'm going to switch to the 4B which is once again a darker one 
and kind of finalize in some of these lines and finalize the stripes on the mane since I just kind of put in the shadows already. It's really white in the reference photo, like the white part on the mane, but I kind of darken it up just because, I don't know, to me this reference photo does seem like it's like, like the highlighting or like the balance. Seems a little like washed out now. I'm, I just put it like in a little bit more darker. You don't have to if you like the contrast. Um, yeah. Up to you. But because I did that, I am just darkening up the stripes now. And then as you get like closer up to this front part of the mane, you can't really see the stripes because of the angle of the mane. Um, so it, it kind of makes that a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll see once we get the ears more defined how it's looking. And then I like how the other stripes are, so I'm just going to kind of finalize the position, starting at the, like, the throat, which is the darkest part. Um, so put that like as, pretty much as dark as I can press, press without being like ridiculous, I guess. Um, but, and then like just leaving, so I'm switching to a 2 h chain to put back in a little bit more of the shadows now that I have like a, a feel for like the contrast of the rest of the values. I feel like I, I do this a lot, like, I don't, and I, you, I rarely put in, like, enough shadows to begin with, but it's usually always easier to darken stuff up later than it is to try pull back on the value. So, like, now that I have those really, really dark stripes there, I want to still make it clear that that throat area of the neck is shadowed, um, so I want to darken that too, and then trying to still keep that highlight towards the top of the neck. And I'm just gonna put in a couple more indications of like hairs in that mane and then also add just like a little bit of a shadow from where the hair connects to the neck there. And I'm gonna switch back to my 4B here and put back in some more of this darkness on the stripes here. You can see where I'm skipping a little bit of the area to keep it like more of like a gray rather than a black where the sun is hitting it and then like kind of causing it to like have like that little gleam, glimmer, uh, shine, shine to it. I'm not sure which word I'm looking for there. Um, but yeah, and then just like darkening it until you're happy about with it. I mean, I think I'm gonna leave it now until I get some more values on the rest of the zebra to kind of play around with. Like, especially if you're trying to like accentuate the head, you don't want really dark, bold colors to be in the neck because like wherever there's the most detail, the most like contrast and values, like the richest tones, which is hard in like black and white, but um, some of that, and that's where your eye is gonna be drawn. So if we put too much dark, even though it's like really easy to put these just thick black stripes on the neck, um, we don't want the eye to necessarily be drawn there. We do want the, at least I, anyways, I would like people to see the face of the zebra because he's so cute. So I'm gonna move over to that and just start putting in some of those stripes. <laughs> Here they're so tiny. Um, it almost looks like his whole forehead is just black. Um, I probably should sharpen my pencil, but I just kind of don't feel like it right now, so I might lose some of the um, ability to be super technical in here, but by all means, if you want to, go ahead and do it, and you'll probably really get some fine new lines and be able to protect your white spaces better. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it's still turning out pretty good here. Because these lines are so small, and this, uh, I'm just kind of doing whatever with them. I'm pretty, pushing pretty hard so I don't have to go over them again too many times because I feel like the more times I have to go over it, the more likely I am to lose all of my white space. So <laughs> I'm going darker here than I normally would. And like, I, I really like that little bit of white right above the eyelashes on this eye. So um, being super careful to preserve that Sometimes, you know, I just get parts of the reference that I really like and I kind of play them up a little bit more or like I'm super conscious of not losing them. Um, so that, that, that's one of them for me. And I kind of got this lower lid of the eye 
the angle a little bit funky, but maybe once we put in the rest of the eye, it'll look better, but I have a feeling I might have done that too fast. Um, just, <laughs> eyes, you should never go fast because usually you're working with dark colors and as humans, like, we read so much emotion through the eyes, so like, it's really, if your eyes are looking a little funky, it really kind of take, it just, it's the easiest way to like, not ruin, but ruin the rest of your hard work. And I think I might have done that. So if you're following along with me, I would watch it there because I think I, I got my eye a little big, which is what I tend to do. I try to be conscious of it, but I still tend to make the same mistakes. But um, it's not terrible. And it's still just like a fun sketch. I'm filling my sketchbook in, getting over. I don't know. I, I really, I've been, I did like the, that other elephant trio sketch. This um, sketchbook spread. I'm kind of basing this off of it. Because I was just kind of having a hard time coming up with ideas to put in my sketchbook. Or like, I'd find a lot of good ideas, but like, I wouldn't really feel like committing to them. So that's kind of, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to keep these loose and fun and. I'm learning, I'm sharing with you guys, I'm above the connections, and I'm also just creating, and it's fun. And it doesn't have to be really serious or, you know, like sometimes I think we just get so into like trying to create something perfect where we don't even want to start. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that you're following along with me today because, um, you know, we're, we're doing it together. Hit. I right know I kind of am getting some sort of like superhero vibes, like uh, from the stripes um, that I have filled in. You know, like you know, like if there's like some special weapon or stone that has to get powered up, like these feel like the lines that would glow on it, like right before it releases releases power or something. I don't know. Um, it's a very powerful zebra. I hope he likes this. But right here. Also, since we are just working black and white, because we're doing just a pencil drawing, but also because this is just a zebra, um, it's, it's, it can be hard to show different like layers of the face. So like this, right now where we're putting in the nose, this has to be black. It's going to be pretty dark. But then like you can see like up on this upper left side, there's going to be like a lighter gray, which we'll want to make sure we preserve to show that it's not just like a sharp drop off. And then the, there's the cheekbones behind it. So just kind of keeping in mind that you're going to want to go dark enough here to be able to show three like layers behind it, kind of. And then putting in the nostrils really helps, I feel like, center the drying a little bit too. And just filling in the nose lightly here just to make sure the shape still looks good. And then I'll, I'm going back and filling it in. So like right there is kind of like that layer back where you want to save just a little bit lighter than the top top of the muzzle or nose. Still don't really know what we're calling it. Um, and then you can, the darkest part of it is kind of the front that's like facing us. The top is a little bit lighter and there's a little highlights right above each nostril. And like, um, so making that front the darkest. And then, and then the nostril like pits themselves also dark um we, we don't want it kind of like i was saying on the, well, the last zebra too we don't want it to be like just a black blob at the end of the zebra's face so i think now that we have that i can go back and darken up some of these other areas and add in some stripes again because I don't know about you, but <laughs> he's a little lopsided right now, so it's hard to tell um, some of the proportions. And as we're filling this in, I'm getting he's, his face feels like a little bit like chubby. Probably, I think I have like um, his nose section a little bit too short, like proportionally, so it makes it just seem like a little pudgier. But it's not worth fixing, especially at this point. Um, you know, like if we wanted, if wanted to be this to be a finished, 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 finished project, um, definitely would have spent some time measuring it. But um, for how kind of quick we're 
we measured out the proportions. I think this is really looking good. I'm starting to skip a couple of those really tiny stripes um, just because I, I only skipped like two or three, but there just wasn't, I just couldn't fit them all. So, <laughs> um, and then like being really um, conscious about where those other side stripes are connecting relative to the eye. Um, I don't know, it's kind of fun though, like doing a little progress check and looking back and seeing how the piece as a whole is coming together. Um, and then, like I say, if you missed drawing that other zebra I just showed, um, I have a link to that video that I posted earlier in the description. Um, so feel free to check that out and we can create the whole thing. And then after this video, I will be posting um, the third part, which will be uh, like kind of more like a silhouette sketch and then we'll just kind of put it in front of a really fun sunset basically just an orange sky but it'll really balance out the spread nicely and then I was like colors and watercolors so um it's kind of, yeah it's kind of fun and just like I said just I just darkened up those a little bit more where I was seeing some like of the paper showing through where I didn't like quite push hard enough um and Sneaking in a couple more of those really tiny ones um, as it goes. And then I kind of reach the edge of like, you know, the really parallel vertical lines. And then there's only a couple, there's like one, two, three, four, five, like five horizontal stripes on the side of the face with one of them being like on the chin line. So they're pretty easy to keep track of, I feel like. Um, even though I just got one a little bit too close to the bottom. Um, but yeah, so I'm just putting, putting these in, I think these ones are very, very fancy on this side, they look kind of like curly cues, um, kind of cute, um, so just connecting that, it kind of also makes this jawline look really nice, and I'll just add in one more, it felt like it was like too white there, so. Uh, I'm following the stripe pattern as close as I can, or as close as I want to. Um, <laughs> the, the reference definitely has a lot blockier white um, horizontal stripes um, than mine, but I was just having fun making the stripes, so I did that. Um, I, I just, uh, when I lifted up my hand there, I just um, saw like the, the unfinished eye right now. It's just kind of like glaring at you. So we're gonna quickly finish up this other side of the face just so he looks more whole and complete. <laughs> um, I just wanted to darken up the ear outline, make sure I still like the shape before I fill in these darker shadows. I'm still just using the same pencil here, just varying the pressure. And I always really like Get paying special attention to like the, where the ears connect to the face because I also feel like there's a lot of cool shadows or highlights there and um uh, like so I, I just grab I have like this really tiny eraser thing I, I got um I ordered it on Amazon and it wasn't a lot I, I don't remember I got it like a couple months ago now but I'm gonna try pull out that l l weird little eye thing that I was complaining about earlier it's still not going to be great, but I hope it makes his eye look a little bit smaller. Um, it's, it is what it is since I was working with a pretty dark pencil there and I just kind of got carried away. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Putting this other eye in here will help balance. And you can really see like the ridge the brow ridge right here. Like the, the stripes are kind of curve around it too actually. So I'm just gonna put this in. Sneak one last stripe in between there. And some th very fine stripes right here, that's for sure. And then you can see that these stripes actually go right up to the base of the ear so there's not other, a lot of other stuff going on there actually. Um, like sometimes there is. Let's 
so I'm just kind of trying to keep an eye again like on like uh, how everything is relative to each other so like the eyes look pretty good I think that one chin is still down a little bit might feel a little bit more balanced once I darken out this ear so you can in the reference the outer sides of both ears is definitely the darkest and there's a very thin line along the kind of the rim of the ear and the highlights are on the edge edge of the ear but i'm not really going to put those in just because the drying is so small but i'm going to go back with the 2h and fill in how the shadows of the face to me i'm I see the most shadows on like the forehead, kind of where there's already a lot of the black. Um, so I'm gonna put it there. It looks like the brightest are on both cheeks, which also helps to distinguish it from the neck. So if you wanna play that up a little bit more than it even is in the reference, you can go ahead. Um, I think that would only like add to your drawing. Um, but I really like this part because it still shows that like, you know, even the white parts of the zebra, like nothing is ever, you know, like white in a picture. There's always some sort of shadow or um, like kind of like hidden tone in it. So it, it's nice not to have any part of like your actual drawing like match your paper. Um, assuming your paper's white, I guess. I've never really worked on anything that's, I don't work on colored paper, so. Um, I've always just had white backgrounds, so I always like to be really conscious about that to make sure that I'm giving every piece of the paper that my drawing is on a little bit of love so it doesn't look like, I don't know, forgotten or sad. So I'm not really happy with how that eye is over there. Um, so I'm going to try kind of just mess with it a little bit. I might end up messing it up, but that's always a risk you take. So we kind of just put the highlight back in above the eyebrow just to <laughs> try to pop it a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more darker values to some of my stripes. And the dark part of the nose. It's the, this reference has a lot of nice little whiskers here. Um, okay, good. It looks like the camera's picking up the ones I put on. Um, but just a little, some nice ones. For fun and then like i said i like looking at the thing at hall so I sneak peek at my other zebra uh, i feel like i could do a better job with the structure of the ears here but otherwise i think we we did pretty good um, i'm excited to hear how yours went so please let me know in the comments but otherwise this is this is the first two congrats on finishing the second zebra i just put up the what my finished sketch of all like three parts will be so the next video we're gonna draw the top sunset silhouette one which the reference we'll be using is here um but that was so much fun thanks so much for joining me i hope this got you out of any sort of drying slump that you might have been in i know it really helped me just to get going again so please leave a comment what you thought below subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I hope to see you in the next video to keep up with our momentum and finish this project.